Good afternoon, everybody. Or morning. <laughs> or well, it's just, a, it's just a do it straight, Curly. Just do it. Just totally do it straight. No radio. It's a beautiful day here at Tiger Stadium, and it's once again the Tigers are taking on the Brewers, and it should be an exciting three game set. Is that okay? That's perfect. Okay. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Wait, wait. Why would the Tigers be playing the Brewers? It's <laughs> an interleague play. <laughs> so Jonathan, really you've never eaten a hot pocket, but you you ate regularly at Arby's, presumably, when you worked there. Well, that's because, I mean, Arby's is closer to food than Hot Pockets. Is Pearly blow drying his hair? <laughs> he's brushing it. No, he's oh, he's blow drying it. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Can we, can we, like, can we, can we do some, can we get, like, some slow-mo? Okay. Carlos, get some slow-mo on this. And then, like, like, Pantene Pro-V this commercial. Live on tape. It's exciting. Or <laughs> I hate myself. <laughs> that goes in the show. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. It's time once again for car drivers window shopping. Today, an exciting challenge by five, four, whatever the number of people is we have on the show is. And here's your host, editor in chief, Tony Caroga. Welcome to Window Shop with Car and Driver. This is the weekly show where Car and Driver editors, staffers, contributors, and friends gather to compete uh, based on a challenge. Ah. <laughs> sorry, Furley. A little, a little creepy, Tony. Uh, I'm gonna need to I'm do that sorry. one again. It was too sexy. It was too sexy, John. It, was it too really sexy. wasn't. <laughs> This is the weekly show where car and driver editors, staffers, contributors, and friends gather to search for cars online based on a challenge. This week's challenge is kind of a tough one. Um, we wanted to search for the challenge is to search for cars that we once liked, loved, and now we just don't like that much anymore. So it's cars that we once loved, now we're kind of like soured on them. And I think the panel actually had some difficulty finding cars this week. I found it very easy. All right. Uh, this week we're joined by uh, Road and Track contributor. Oh, sorry, Road and Track senior editor, Mr. John Curly Huffman. Whatever. Uh, deputy <laughs> testing director Casey Colwell. Curly uh, definitely did the challenge. Our driver contributor, Mr. Jonathan Ramsey, and senior editor Alana Sure. Uh, we didn't talk about order. Pearly, you want to kick it off? Sure, I do. This is it. Okay. This is easy for me, uh, and I don't know why everybody else found it so easy. So Say difficult. that one more time, Pearly. What was that? I didn't get that. This was easy for me. This was okay. This Do you think he got the challenge right? I, the car I grew up worship. This, by the way, this is shot by Fred Gregory, one of our buddies. Carcraft. This is one of the greatest covers of ever for a car magazine. Bingo board starting off hot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Fred Gregory shot. That. You guys remember Fred Gregory? Wait, yeah. Fred. Fred took this photo. Fred took this photo. Wait, are those real cars or are those Matchbox? Those are the those real more cars. small cars. No, those are the real cars. Those are, are you the sure there's cars. no people in them? There's real funny cars. They're 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 that's they're you're on you're in a center line. You're, you're in the middle. Line. Yeah. <laughs> these, are, these are funny cars. Okay. And the car I, the car I obviously always liked was uh, Don Perdome's uh, Don Perdome's uh, snake funny car, and uh, you know used to come in a set which I had which I loved. And if you didn't like that, you had Dan Gurney would drive the the the, the uh, Cudas in uh, Trans Am, also sponsored by Hot Wheels. Very cool. And uh, if you want, go, go online to eBay right now where you can buy this car. In my store. Wow. <laughs> no, no free ads. ads. <laughs> Covering every base to his. Yeah, Curly, I hope you included my book about Don Perdome in here since we're <laughs> pitching everything that we personally did on our I, I just, I just, I just, Bingo. I have, Bingo. I have, yeah. I, I'm, I have to say my that card if, is full. Right, I have to say that if you want to read about Don Perdome, the authoritative piece of work. Is of course <laughs> Alana Schur's fantastic book about uh, Don Perdomo. I should know because I haven't read it. Is this and, a is he a close personal friend? <laughs> he, he's a close personal friend. I, that I, better I, not I, be a Motor Trend link you're about to open. It well, it's a it's an interesting. <laughs> <You're> not open <laughs> that. Oh yeah, this is this is where we where we run the technical difficulty thing. <laughs> 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 what are those called? This is where I really. What are you doing? That's this is not story, a credible this is article. From Hot go to, go Hot to your Hot listing. It's from Hot Rod. It shows I actually drove a 1971 Hemi Coda, Coda convertible from LA no, to. Uh, I, I I trust you. Oh, is that a Coda AAR? Uh, the, the, no. There is an AAR. He's got, this guy he has everything. Oh, no. Yeah, they're, 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 Hemi. It was a Hemi. 
Got That's it. like 12 years ago. Oh, and this is the goodness. car I found. This is a 71 Hemi Plymouth Coupe. Plymouth. Wait a minute. Hold on. Wait, wait. So, Pearly, you loved the car when you drove it for the review, and now you don't like it. No, 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 no. I loved it when I was a kid. Then I drove it. And uh, they're terrible cars. Just uh, utter crap. What's, what's terrible about them? Well, essentially, the way they were built is, is that they took the B car, which is like a Plymouth satellite or a Dodge Charger front end, they not, and they basically welded it to the back end of a of the uh, uh, what was those? Those were the F the F cars were the uh, the coup were the um, no, you're, Valiant, thinking, you're the, thinking GM. No, no, the, the they had the same. I, I can't remember what the code code was with for for the Valiant, but uh, a body. A, a. Yeah, they're a, they're a bodies. And uh, so you took the you took the E's and the A's. You put they, you took the B's and the A's. You put together, got the E. And it was always, it's always a floppy structure. The steering sucks. They're too big in the front. They're too small in the back. Having said that, they're the most be- one of the most beautiful cars ever made. I remain in love with the way they look. I just hate the way they drive. Yeah, yeah these, are, these are the same as like uh, Challengers, right? Yeah. 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 Cud- Cudas and Challengers, yeah, which are smaller than the Chargers. That's like, a, yep. I think, a slightly smaller wheelbase, the Cuda, than the... The yeah. challenge. Um, the challenge really stretch it out a little bit. So I, I have to ask this, and I mean, it will be relevant for my own choice too. But I mean, did you drive like a lot of these or just this one? Because I've driven, I've, I've driven, I've driven like four or five of them. I've driven a, I've driven an AAR Cuda. I've driven uh, that Hemi Cuda convertible. I've driven. I used. I had a friend seventy four Challenger. I've. Uh, I've never, I've never liked E-Body. I, I love the way E-Bodies look. It's a car I worship the way it looks. I think it's the best, one of the best looking cars of all time. And I just think it's a miserable engineering mal- malpractice. Do you, you like the way that E-Bodies drive? I like the way B-Bodies drive too. I like the way B-Bodies drive. They're a bigger car. I mean, I like, so I have a Challenger and a Cuda and a Charger. And other than like having a little more to park in the B-Body, I would not say they drive any different. <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> now that we're the having this throw down. thrown the gauntlet down do you, do you like camaros early i've had camaros i like camaros better they i mean it's they all feel the same you know they don't and i'm gonna go with the line here that like all cars built before 1980 pretty much feel the same yeah, I mean, in their well, segment then, yeah in their domestic segment. Ones. excuse me all domestic cars built before 1980 yeah you know the thing is also like uh, uh, you get into them and you know even if it's like a good visual resto like still like a uh, you know at the time you did that story a 30 year old car like yeah it so i i feel like they get a bad rep because if you like really do a nice a nice job on the mechanical underpinnings like they I mean they yeah I've only okay. driven an unrestored I've only driven an unrestored I think it was a CUDA um I can't remember maybe it was a Challenger um, <laughs> but it wasn't it wasn't great but it was unrestored so I was like okay it's unrestored all the rubber in the suspension is ancient that's why it feels sloppy and terrible and and borderline dangerous I, I mean I guess I can't I can't argue with your opinion on this point. right you if you think <laughs> that this that the CUDA and the Challenger are you know, miserable cars to drive and didn't meet your expectations. I, I can't argue with that, you know. Um, I mean, if that's what you want to believe, Pearly, then... <laughs> Oh, here's, here's the thing. Now, now, now this, that... also brings, wait, wait, this also brings up another point is how, how do we vote on this? Do we vote on who's... Thank you. Do we vote on, on... How are we voting on this? We'll talk about that at the verdict. Okay. Okay. First of all, now that now that Alana and I are no longer friends, no longer uh, friends, dude. Yeah. And so that now now that this has put the rupture in our relationship, this is the car I'm going with. It's a car. Look, I, I can't deny. Look at this interior. Even the interior design is beautiful. It's built like crap, but it's a beautiful design. And I, I can't just from a design standpoint, these are some of the best cars ever done. Period of anybody manufacturer. I just does it say does it say when this one was restored? Yeah. Are those seats? Is that what the seats actually look like? Yeah. These yeah, actually look like. like. Yeah, so this is a, they want 100 and this is like they want $135,950 for this car. It's in, mm. in Canada. 50 and, grand uh, just in the engine. That's yeah, that's a lot of money. To Somebody make. got ripped off. Yeah, I was just saying. Well, that. you know, the thing is, <laughs> yeah. I, I think I, I think Alana would agree with me, at least on this point, is, is that if you're going to get an engine in this car, the one to get is not the Hemi, it's the 440. 446, I will, yeah. I will agree that if you want a daily <laughs> driver, um, a 440 is uh, easier to easier to keep in tune unless you're a Hemi expert. Is this a yeah. 528 Hemi? Is that what that was? No, this is a 426. 
the 426 Street Hemi. Oh, no, they, they have a 528 crate, crate Hemi. Yeah, they put a crate engine in there. Oh, they did? It says 528 crate. <laughs> Oh, shit. in that case, I don't want this car. <laughs> uh, you didn't want so, it anyway. Yeah, yeah. You didn't want it anyway. <laughs> I thought it was a pretty. I thought it was a pretty car because it had the billboard on the side and it looked like a. What's a five hundred twenty-eight cubic inch? That's a boy. It's a stroke. It's a stroke heavy. Yeah, you know, that's an eight point. Yeah. That's an eight point seven liter. It might be its own like aftermarket. Yeah. Rather than I don't know. I don't. I don't. Is it a Mopar? I don't know if it's a Mopar crate engine or not, but it's it's probably somebody's ship. Somebody's building him and shipping him out for fifty thousand. Right, I want it. All right, probably. It's over. So you're done. Are you saying you guys have already rejected my idea? Thanks a lot. Have no, no, I, no, 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 no. We we no we do that we, at the end of the show. Probably. We'll reject we it later. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. At the end. <laughs> we just have yeah, to move no, on no, to no, the next. You know, now, now just watch just, four more presentations and then we'll I, I reject. Say, guys, we have to give Pearly credit because he absolutely did understand the assignment and he did like complete. He did it completely right. Like he did. He, he did. showed car craft. He, he showed a Motor Trend thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's not for Motor Trend. That's, you know, the problem is that everything is Motor Trend over there now. It's in he Hot Rod. Your, I wrote that for Hot Rod. your book. Then, right, then why would you go up. over there? Then why would you go over there, Pearly? Because I wrote that story that's relevant to this car. Yeah, right. well, I'm, over there, they've moved all of the other brands to one <laughs> the, website. So you umbrella. can no longer don't, share. Don't say the Voldemort. Yes, thank you, without. Jonathan. Thank you. Don't say Voldemort. <laughs> it is Voldemort. <laughs> All right, I'll no, that's, my, that's my call. All right, I'm up. I'm up. All right, give me one. I just got to pay a car. I, I'm still going to love and I'm going to feel hurt by it. We're, our, our relationship is over. Go. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, you can come drive mine and see if you okay. still hate it. Okay. Give me one second here. I'm getting, <laughs> getting us ready. So, about those tigers and brewers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. So, yeah. like Pearly, can you guys see all this? Yep. Yeah. I had some real fantasies about a car that I first learned about in in drag racing. Can you say, how, um, how old were you? Can you say, or roughly? Um, yeah, like 21, because I wasn't okay. into cars as a kid. Um, but when I when I saw these, uh, these like A100 pickup truck drag oh. racers, this was the backup pickup, which actually went down the track backwards like that, had like glass in the floor, people would look at it. I was like, this is ridiculous and I love it. And I love the little vans. Um, and then we got a van and I was actually looking for like the full van, you know, which looks more like a Volkswagen or a Ford. Uh, and there were very few for sale. Like I couldn't find any. So I had to go with the pickup, um, but we got one. Um, Tom and I bought one from our friend, Dave. And- Freiburger? No. Um, and it was, you know, they're so cute. It's, you know, like Pearly's car. They look great, right? I think they're one of the best looking forward control vans that you could get. This one is beautiful, has a level, you know, the engine's right here. You can like tune it while you're driving. And I have a lot of stories about them. Like when I was building my Challenger, uh, I went to buy a 440 and I needed to pick up that engine. So my friend, um, <clears throat> who was the drum, drummer for the punk band, The Germs, uh, Don Bowles. He had one of these, he like drove me over there. We had to stop to like buy weed on the way. I mean, I think it was weed, I don't know. <laughs> I was like, and, uh, and then I had to ride back in the back of one um, with like an engine that was sitting on a tire. I sort of felt like I was in a tiger cage. So when Tom and I got one, I was pretty excited about it. And um, then I drove it on a windy day uh, and it moved over multiple lanes on the freeway at will. And you're sitting basically like, I don't know, somebody was like, where's the crumple zone? I'm like, you are the crumple zone. Your legs are the crumple zone. Um, and Tom was always like, no, you just got to let it seek its own center. It'll come back to the middle of the lane. I'm like, dude, by the time I do that, I'm already dead. So anyway, it made me cry. And I drove it home and I never drove it again. And then we sold it. <laughs> really? So, yeah, it is the it only car I could think of for this challenge because in general I am both forgiving and loyal yeah I tend to fall in love with cars as as time goes on not fall out of love with them so yeah them. but this one um this one just I felt like I was not a good enough driver for it I just couldn't handle it it tried too much to for me you. hold on wait you felt like you weren't a good enough driver as opposed to thinking this is a uh pile of the proverbial I mean, I think that 
really a good driver should be able to maneuver anything. Like you just have to learn the quirks and then you work around them. But I, I just like couldn't handle this. It was so that, like, there's like eight, too much for me. Okay. There's like this eight good drivers in the country then is what, is what you're saying. Yeah, this isn't a case of this thing's like a fighter jet, and when it's going straight, it's just totally unstable. But when it gets in the corners, it's great. All right, the F <laughs> sixteen well, like, of pickups. It is like okay, that. Just it, making sure. It's exactly like that, except for it's never great. They're very, you know they're they're extremely primitive vehicles. I mean, I think they they have a solid front axle, don't they? Uh, probably, I'm not sure. Probably. I don't know. Um, I don't know. They are beautiful. I, I refuse to learn anything more about them. <laughs> so what engine powered yours? Um, oh, that's a good story. So we bought it from our friend Dave Caning, who was one of those people who's convinced that uh, the Chrysler six cylinder engine is um, a superior <laughs> engine to any V8, which is only true if you want an engine that will run with no oil. Um, so he had this 318 powered van and he, took the 318 out and put a slant six in. And when we bought it, Tom was like, I'm not going to ever drive a slant six van. And so we brought it here, pulled the slant six out, put the 318 back in, and then we paid him for it. Cause we were like- oh, Okay, wait, hold on. So one of Tom's principles is never to drive a slant six in the van? Period. He was just like, I don't understand why you would take a V8 out and put a six cylinder in. Okay. Um, you know, I, there are a lot of new car companies who should maybe be listening to that right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, On the I don't know. Stellantis introducing their inline six to <laughs> I know this has been a so far this episode is a little rough on the, on the Mopar brands. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. I like an inline six, maybe not a slant six, but I like an inline six. The slant six is I'm not just, a magic. I know, I know the slant six, I know. Yeah. Don't don't I don't want to disparage the inline six. <laughs> All right, I take it back, Casey. Don't fight me. I'm tired. He just what likes is, the what, inherent balance. Yeah. What is the Stellantis calling the inline six? Is like the Titan. hurricane. Hurricane. Oh god, that's in trouble. We're in trouble. <laughs> Why are we in trouble? Why are we in trouble? <laughs> Nostradamus has spoken. Don't don't ask. <laughs> just, just let it be. It's uh, it's too bad it's not carbureted because wasn't there like some aftermarket thing called the tornado for like putting on your carburetor to like get a swirl going? Yeah, that's a, well, you can have, like the tornado on the hurricane. We're supposed to swirl. And then you could, then you could put it in a duster. And I think we a little... did a I think they did a test on that because yeah, they, they claimed they claimed like uh, a fuel economy benefit and you know I mean snake oil stuff. Right. I love the accelerator pedal on there. Oh, yeah. Floor mounted. Yeah. And the driving position is amazing on that thing. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mr. Um, Jonathan Ramsey, you said you had some trouble with this challenge, right? Oh, man. Yeah. And I so and Casey mentioned this first. So uh, it, it was like these cars. So the BMW, it ages terribly, but I was never really into it. And like we've never had a non M3 BMW on the show. There wasn't an E30. Like there's a reason for that. Like there's something crazy. This the I fell in love with this one as a kid. But like I was a kid. Like what did I know? Um, well, that's okay. I mean, mine mine is you know youth. Oh, yeah, mine's like kid I, related too. I can't blame the I, I can't blame the the car for what you know my lack of knowledge of everything um, that you have now. This one was <laughs> his book. exactly. I can do it now. I could do it when I was a kid. This one terribly flawed but still like a hero to me because i loved the flaws so Mer you're wrong I, about that mercies are awesome well they are but they are flawed they're amazing but they are terribly flawed okay uh, what did you pick let's see what you picked. um so i picked uh something that was was never a hero car for me but was can you see that yeah. Oh, great wow. choice. That is a pretty um, good choice. That's a yeah. damn darn it. Good choice. Darn it. <laughs> <laughs> but was if I could get my screen to up, oh, I can't get the screen to I get just realized here. that I've been looking at the wrong screen this whole time. <laughs> so <laughs> it was never a hero car for me, but when I took it on the it was on the first drive. So Alpha Mail 4C 2015, when I took it on the first drive. Um, like enjoyed it. It was on California coast, like you know, great roads. You start from a parking lot essentially right by 
the PCH so you don't have to do too much city stuff. It's all good. And then, uh, you know, I was like, hey, you know, it's compromised, but above seven tenths, like as long as you, if you can live there, it's great. And I thought, you know, a great weekend car, almost like like an early Vantage V8 or maybe a later Vantage V8 is a better example. Um, going to put you through a bit of guff, but when you get it out there, it's going to be amazing. Well, then I had one in uh, Los Angeles uh, for a week and it was unbearable. Very like miserable. just getting to the curvy roads where I could enjoy it. Like by the time I got to the, the front of the head of the road, I was like, I, I'm done with this. I'm sick of it. I want to take an Uber home and I'll come back and pick it up later. The engine was uh, not enjoyable. The engine note didn't sound nice. Yeah, a lot um, of them didn't have any muffler. Like they just had like a cross. That's right. And you to cancel. And didn't you had to pay around. extra for that? Didn't you like the the sport the sport exhaust option? I thought cost more for them to take out the muffler. Um, yeah, I, I had a press car and I looked underneath it to see if it had the muffler or not. It did not. And then I saw on the dampers. Wait, what's in that trunk? I saw on the dampers it said press press car. <laughs> so it had been like really prepared. Oh, I'm sure that was just a coincidence. Yeah, I'm sure that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Italian. Italian. Yeah. <laughs> but I was excited. I was excited about this car because of the carbon fiber structure. But then it yeah. ended up weighing more than an ND Miata. So what is yeah. the point? And like it, it wasn't, I thought it was huge. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Pause it. Right <laughs> I, I now. I was not gonna say anything. Right now. <laughs> Carlos you gotta call the boss out on that. <laughs> Carlos Just saying. That out. Let Continue. Him <laughs> Let him have it. <laughs> Um, so pearly is looking better and better throughout this episode yeah i love it early pearly is quiet too and that's i mean <laughs> this is someone get the date down um <laughs> so yeah the they had uh oh that's a good angle though that looks good oh i mean i i still think it's a really good looking car and i think it looks i think it looks great with the top on and the top off um I think it it's is. an interesting this looking is, car. I don't know if it's a great looking this, this car. Is, this car is five of the best minutes you will ever have in a car will be in this car. And 16 well of said. the worst hours you'll have in a car. Is, is car. Well I, said. I, I feel like this car was like, have you ever seen that that kind of rodeo um, opener that where people chase a greased piglet? Like they, they release all these like oiled baby pigs and then everybody tries to chase them and they like, they're snorty and they squirm around and like they're, that, that was what this car reminded me of. Like it felt all like, like oiled and snorty. <laughs> and then the dual, the dual manual is a deal breaker for me. I mean, the dual clutch is eh on this car too. It's not a great dual clutch. Well, I think that's, see, I think that's like the, when the GT3 came out with just the automatic, that automatic was still amazing. Like, yes. sure, I take a manual, but that automatic was amazing. The problem was that this automatic wasn't. Not amazing. Um, yeah. And so you couldn't, there was nothing to, worthy of forgiving what the car put you through how much are these worth nowadays jonathan well so this one was one of the least expensive ones i found at 50 grand like which is and that's a, a high mileage one that's a high mileage one because nobody okay. drives these ever well yeah i mean i suppose i the uh the other ones there weren't that there weren't aren't that many of them for sale uh the other ones though were like closer to 70 yeah, there, so, there weren't that many sold. No, there is. I that wanted. As well. it, it is I, one of those cars where if people were like, "Hey, what's like, what's a future collector car?" I'd be like, "Actually, Alfa Romeo Four C. I think you know there weren't that many of them, and uh, you, you know, but like it's already going up, so people already know." I, I wanted to love this car so much, it, mainly because I I I love pretty much all Alfa Romeos. Um, and, uh, and, but the interesting thing is, so you, you said you went on the launch, right? Yeah. Jonathan? The one in California. You went on California launch. I wonder if the California, okay. So the European cars um, have a completely different suspension and mm. all, all the components are aluminum and light. And um, the U S cars, because it was deemed that our roads are, you know, garbage. Mm. Uh, they, it's, it's, this, it's, this, it's all steel. Mm. And um, everyone, I didn't, I didn't go. Uh, I think Aaron Robinson went on the launch for us. Um, and and but everyone I know that that had driven both, like both the, both the European version and and the North American version, say that the European version is significantly better to drive. Um, mm. uh. 
And I remember the stitching on this wheel on these wheels is so it, it stands so proud mm. and it and it like hurts your fingers after yeah. after after a long day of driving. The European um, one also had those crazy spider headlights, the spider eye headlights, not this, not that. Oh headlight. yeah. I thought that um, was just for a concept. The the, 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 pro the problem with this car, the basic problem with this car is the idea is so attractive and the execution is so frustrating. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, it, it just, it's, it's, it's one of those things where you get into the car and you just kind of go like, God, this is supposed to be so good and it isn't. Because I imagined it would be like a turbocharged Lotus Elise. Yeah. And it's not, it's not it even It should have been. It I mean, this been. isn't, this isn't even the Alfa Romeo engine, right? Or is it? I'm it's trying to remember. One point, I thought it was 1.7 yeah, liter. Or That's there was was in, was there maybe they were they couldn't fit there was there was I know there was an engine they couldn't fit in it that they wanted to they couldn't fit I forget it, it wasn't this isn't engine. there a story about that isn't there something like that hmm. Tony am I Casey That's the um, one two four spider they couldn't get this engine in the one two four spider um so they okay. ended up putting in the five hundred engine into the one two four spider and there's Sorry, Casey, were the, the European ones were damped different or is it just that they were lighter? Because uh, they were lighter. And, and so all the all the suspension components were aluminum mm. um, or are aluminum. And uh, and the U.S. ones are steel. And that just I mean, that that that, you know, having having lighter, um, you know, basically lighter unsprung mass really changes right. the way a car behaves and drives it. Uh... So yeah, it, it's because of this one, especially when I got in the city, it was so stiff and everything just shot straight, straight through. I mean, it's hardly anything there to it. It's a tiny car, but And yeah. the carbon fiber structure doesn't really, you know, carbon fiber structures like that don't have a lot of sound deadening. It's just unpleasant to be in. Yeah. yeah. Well, so it's, it's yeah, like the basically, resonance, yeah, like the resonance sorry, the, re the resonance was also terrible from the engine, yeah. I thought, uh, being right there. Go ahead, Casey. No, I was, I was just, it's like, it, it was like, uh, it was kind of built and, and built up as it's like an Italian Lotus Elise, and um, and and it just didn't deliver. Right. So I got up so late, I didn't even I didn't read this thing. Recent trade in manufacturer buyback for suspension noise when new. Do not buy this car. <laughs> Anyone looking, don't don't buy. It. I'm sure the deal is fine, but don't. This is not the one you want. Find another example. But yeah, that is uh, it, and it was. Uh -oh. Hello. Did we just lose him? Yeah. Just kill him? Maybe the maybe the dealer has been watching this and they just cut him off before he named him. There are a couple of red buttons, and one of them is in share and one of them is leave. <laughs> and I clicked, I clicked uh, leave <laughs> instead of stop sharing. So sorry about that. <laughs> well, while you were gone, Pearlie was talking about mop buckets. Oh my God! I'm glad we got that recorded. So, Carlos, send me that clip. <laughs> I want to know all about them. Well, just to say, the structure is similar to the to a mop bucket. It's it's you know it's like a, the plastic yellow buckets you'll see that the on wheels. Mm. The, the people are uh, you'll see the janitor all right. at the department store. That's yeah. essentially the four C structure, and it feels it's it just transmits everything to yeah. your butt. Everything goes right to your butt, and there's no insulation. Having said that. Some of the, the carbon fiber that you look at it when you when you see it in real life is really beautiful. It's, it it's is. Beautiful. Oh yeah, no, they know what they're doing with that. We're laying it up, but yeah, painful to, to write in. But I do think this has uh, been so far three strikes against Stellantis, yeah, <laughs> which so far. Uh, Let's never see happened before. He brought. <laughs> um, yeah. So this is. I had a really hard time with this, like like Jonathan, like um, you know. I, I just had a hard time, um, and uh, and I think we've I think we've talked about my ownership of uh, of this car before. Um, I almost picked uh, here. I'll start sharing. Sorry, uh, I almost picked. Oh, interesting. A, uh, uh, a lightning uh, mainly just because I was going to tell the story of my my friend's dad Brian Chase buying a Spite Lightning because he went by a dealership and. Uh, there was like there was a lightning out front, you know. This was in like '98 or '99, something like that. Well, it's probably '99 or 2000. And uh, and the the guy at the Ford dealership said, "Oh man, I can't say this. Uh, we can't get one, even if you wanted it. Couldn't get it. No way." And he kind of said, "Really?" And then he called his car guy, and he had one two weeks later, just to drive back to the dealership and talk to that salesman. So I always like that. But anyway, um, 
I had a, a, a an SN90. I still have an SN95 Mustang, uh, and I have totally fallen out of love with these. Mm. Um, out of love? Yeah, I have. I mean, I, but then I'm like looking at this one, and even now I'm going, I'm going. Yeah, it still looks good. I like the way these They're look. Cool looking. I, I've always liked the way these look. Um, and, and, wait, uh, and do you do you appreciate the Mustang Qs? on this car as well <laughs> that's that's that's, crap about that's this. a callback that's, um <laughs> it's got the little right. cockpit you're mean yeah. you're just mean how's that mean <laughs> casey let's get a good shot of that running horse <laughs> <laughs> the running horse um and uh so i i and, and i mean even looking at like, like mine i actually still have it um and Ooh, it, stock you know, radio it, and cd player Stock, stock radio. This is uh, not the uh, the Mach 460, uh, which was at the time a, a big, no, um, right. big in the world of uh, of car audio. So you still have your Mustang, right? I do. I do. It was uh, it was my dad had it in Florida for a while, and then it kind of like sat in Florida for a while. So it's it's got a lovely patina on it that uh, you know it's not in, it's not in great shape um and i think we're going to turn it into into a lemons car um because i mean even i mean i'm i would be surprised if if this guy gets 13 grand for this car um hmm. but uh you know we got it um we got it in the 90s uh and and basically got it because uh i did not listen to the words i read in car and driver which i didn't Listen to the words I read. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> you didn't hear the advice. Yeah, early morning shows. Yeah, um, <laughs> and uh, you know, because it, it was like it was like you know at the time. I mean, the, the Camaro uh, definitely drove better, and I you know, and I and I and I drove Camaros like those. Uh, uh, I don't even know what they're called. Um, Casey, but, are people in the office talking? Will you tell them you're on air? Yeah, I'll uh, hold on a second. Let me, let me, let me, let me mute. There's no, there's second. no studio light above yeah. his door. There's an yeah. office. You know, well, I, I kind of wish he'd left it. I kind of wish he hadn't unmuted. That's exactly. I love, uh, I love yeah. that look though. You know, I, I have good He's memories. like, I'm gonna rip all of you. <laughs> no, they listen. They listen. In, in, I had a when I was working for a different publication. Uh, I had a, one of these for a year. I had a red 94 coupe with a five liter in it. And Starcraft? No, no, it's not that publication. It was one that starts. That's not a five liter. It's a four nine. Whatever. It, we, it, we were, I was at a publication that called it the five liter because that's what Ford called it. And uh, we, uh, and I had, I drove it every day and I used to do a burnout every morning to kind of like obscure the stripe on this lady. It was, it's a long story, but anyhow. And December of 1994, I took it from Santa Barbara to Escondido. Where and my yet we was. wonder why you have problems with your homeowners association. I know exactly. Yeah. Daily anyhow, burnout. No, no, no. Okay, anyhow, I drove from I drove from the Santa Barbara to Escondido in an hour and 45 minutes on Christmas morning, 1994, in one of these things. How far and is that? It's almost 200 miles. Wow. And uh, we were I was we were going down there, and it was like completely empty. The road was completely empty. Nobody was on the road. And I was only like, and I was getting passed. I was doing 115 miles an hour. And I was getting passed. And uh, it was so much fun that I can't ever say that these cars are disappointing because that car just, I love that car. And uh, the, one of the tricks on these cars is you want to get the cloth upholstery. You don't get the leather because the, the cloth seats are a lot better than the, um, are a lot better than the, uh, than the leather ones. Yeah, my, mine's leather, but mine's also, I have, uh, I have a, I have a tan interior. And the nice, the cool thing about the tan interior is it, it's like this, um, yeah, it's this two-tone dash. Let me see if I can find a. Can you guys see my cursor? I I, I, I don't remember. Mm -mm. Yeah, see your what? I can see your cursor. Yeah. You can. Oh, you can see yeah. the cursor. Yeah. So. Um, you can walk us through the Mustang cues. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess this is gonna be the best. This is gonna be like the best one. But it's so like all this here is all tan. So it's like two tan like binnacles yes. coming at you. You know, it also it also has has the uh, the the optimum. Uh, HVAC controls, the three dial. Uh, Optimum. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's, that's a pretty, it, it, it's pretty good. And it's funny. Like, I mean, I, I'm looking at all these things that are broken on it. So these hundred percent, that is not connected to the slats in the back. Oh, yeah, that's broken. Yeah. And, and this little door down here is like probably broken. Um, Casey, 
you I mean unless I fell asleep briefly you haven't actually told us why you don't like it right oh I mean, these these cars don't drive very well okay I mean, I mean that's pretty cool I mean it's 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 uh you know I hadn't I didn't drive it for a very long time and then and then drove it again and I was I was just kind of like yeah this isn't this but it, I, I'm but it also sounded like like you weren't exactly over the moon about it in the, when you saw first saw it or got it or no you... no when i got it i loved it i, lo okay. I love yeah i okay. mean when when uh when we first had it loved it um they sound great they do um, right. um that's 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 one thing that they really uh they really have going for them i think they, they sounded great they looked great um they just didn't drive particularly great and <laughs> but uh, that came you decided that that happened after you drove a bunch of other cars right yes. yeah 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 <laughs> Which is how yeah. one usually falls in love with yeah, yeah, a Mustang yeah, or a Camaro. <laughs> the, the one thing I, I remember. No, that's how that's how one falls out of love with a Mustang or Camaro. That, well, yes, that's cars. right. <laughs> exactly, and and Corvette for the C5, I think. <laughs> well, I always thought the uh, the one thing I always liked the, the one version of this car that I really really liked was the SVT Cobra version with the yeah. uh, with the four cam engine, mm -hmm. which was a really sweet car. To, what I thought was a really sweet car with or without the blower. Without the first one, the, yeah, the first, like one. first one. That was yeah. one that um, they claimed a certain horsepower, and then in our testing, it was no quicker. Oh right. Then it's yeah. Wasn't that an intake issue? They it that was. they had. Yeah. Yeah. I think intake. Well, it, it was. It was. Well, initially, it was. I think three hundred five horse, and mm -hmm. then in ninety eight or ninety nine, they got an update, and it went to like three fifteen, three twenty, three twenty, and it was like yeah, it was no different from the three hundred five horse. These were. And 96, these were these were 215 horse, which is basically the same as the outgoing 4.9 liter. Yeah. And um, uh, and then the um, and then they got to, and then in 98, I think they, they went to 225. Um, but yeah, there we go. All right, you guys ready to see a terrible car? <laughs> you once loved. Hang on, I gotta find it. Um, Did your dad almost buy it? No, I I, I owned one of these. <laughs> oh, God, you you admit it? Now you're admitting it? Yes, I own a Lotus Elan, just like this one. This wait, is a wait, really... hold on. We, wait, there's a story there. Per, why did you deny owning? I never denied owning this. No, he, 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 he recommended this car on another episode. He recommended people buying this car on a previous episode. <laughs> it's good for me, you know. <laughs> I don't know why this isn't working, <laughs> but it looks good on you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this this basically this is the Judge Smales type thing. Oh, the, this hat is horrible. Can you believe this hat? I can't remember what the challenge was, but I'm sure this car met the challenge perfectly. No, it, it didn't. It been, was stupid. The challenge it was, was the wrong really, choice. Really, the challenge was front wheel drive Lotuses. I seem to recall. <laughs> <laughs> You're just so, such a hypocrite. So I own, my... Let me talk. I have to present. I let you present. Ah, this explains why you've been able to rise to the top of the corporate ladder. Oh, my <laughs> boy. I need to start writing this down. All right. So this car came to the States. Lotus, Lotus was purchased by General Motors. So you see an F body steering wheel. Um, and then they had a tie-in with the Suzu as well, so it's an Isuzu-powered car. But Lotus decided to make a front-wheel drive car with the goal of making an easy-to-drive, fast sports car roadster. And then they built it, and it cost $40,000 new in 1991, and absolutely nobody bought it. I think in the States, they sold like 562, and they were sitting on dealer lots for like years afterwards, brand new. This one's been retrimmed. This isn't stock, this Alcantara sort of thing. Um, but it had 162 horsepower, 0 to 60 and 6.4. So it was pretty quick for the day. And it has some Lotus cues, but it's a front wheel drive car, which doesn't really work with like, if you look at the, you know, the dash to axle on this car is all wonky. Um, yeah, this is the American version. This is the European version, which has smaller bumpers, which is actually less good looking, I think. The American one's a little bit better looking. Um, but uh, so Lotus, when they developed this car, they were used to the resin shrinking by a certain percentage. And this new company that they had supplied the resin from, it didn't have that shrinkage. So this car is actually like a quarter percent larger 
body wise than it's supposed to be a which quarter. is also which is yeah which is also why it has this kind quarter of, of a percent a quarter of a percent not a quarter it's not it's not 25 percent larger than this okay. no no yes a quarter of a percent okay yeah exactly Thank you. Yeah, and so, but you can sort of see it because the 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 wheels don't fit the body properly mm -hmm. uh, because they were counting on the the you know the 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 resin to shrink and it just never did. Like if it, it looks especially bad in the in the European version, which has the smaller wheels. I mean, now, if someone okay, if someone I mean, told me this was a percent a, is not ever going to account for that. Uh, that I was gonna gap. say yeah, that's all. Uh, if someone told me this was a geo concept, like a geo metro concept, when they were going to go no. up market i would mercury it. capri yeah exactly and the capri <laughs> exactly. came out right around the same time yeah exactly mm. the australian make Capri. now you you i remember the previously you presented this about how excited you were that these taillights were off something else <laughs> yeah do you remember what they were <laughs> i you know i've been able to block that out of my mind why don't you share it again so I can be by it. it's, like, it's off the renault alpine yeah that's fine i knew it was french yeah. So um, they had, they wanted to put a Suzu, um, what's it called? It was called the Piazza Impulse. They wanted to put a Suzu Impulse taillights on it, but then they tested them and they were actually, they didn't meet FMBSS requirements. <laughs> what's FMBSS? They, they, were, they were half a percent off. <laughs> Did you say yeah. what is FMBSS, Pearlie? Yeah, what is FMBSSS? It is the federal, federal, federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards. Standards, yeah. Okay, well, I never... I like never, the, the laws that all cars have to follow on American roads. In the, in the like U.S. The exactly. Kind of like a division. I've never, never, never heard that term before. I've, I've only been working in this business for 30 years, so maybe oh it's something goodness. new to me. <laughs> well, they don't have that at CarCraft. I'm <laughs> not sure. I'm sure you've heard it. You just didn't listen. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tony. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so this is the car. It's filled with Opal switch gear. It's just a, a hodgepodge of um, of parts bin stuff. But it's so why do you fall, why'd you fall out of love with it? Sorry, Casey. Why'd you fall out of love with it? Well, you know, it's a front wheel drive. I was excited about it at the time, and I was gonna say, why did you fall in love with it? Is the question. Well, I, I, I don't I don't understand. I think that's the best question. I don't understand why anybody who would go into this car thinking it was a good car. It's ugly. It's slow. It's got a front drive drivetrain. It's garbage. It's so, it's not so, ugly. It's not it's ugly. Apparent I, trash, and you were somehow <laughs> you were somehow in love with it. Okay. Yeah. Fair. I mean, that's your perspective. In my perspective, <laughs> I really liked the way it looked. It was fun to drive. I thought, and it was not slow for the time. I mean, six four twenty years ago wasn't too bad. Twenty or thirty years ago. Well, you know, a long time ago. Now. It's a cool car. When did, so when did you get when did you get it what year uh in the 90s <laughs> in the 90s in the so 90s was it, i mean well you said you said 20 years ago but then i don't know when the okay. 90s were like, <laughs> the 90s he, were he like has, 15 he, years longer yeah. ago it, than you think they were well yeah, that's now exactly that he's, right. he's boss he got has it. people she's for that it. he has All right, people now, for that now we've come to the part of the show where we judge each other's picks and crown a winner, uh, Mr. Huffman. I, I, how are we judging? How are we judging? Which car? Which car is the truly the most disappointing? Yes. Okay, well, that's fair. It, is it? Yeah. From yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. Yes. Which one's the most disappointing? Yeah. I'll take that. I... Okay. Okay. And is Tony frozen or is it just me? It's no, just I'm frozen. Okay. 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 Sideways, Pearly. Sideways for Pearly? Yeah, I like his car. I, I just don't think those cars are disappointing. Yeah, oh, yeah I don't I've think never, they're disappointing either. And actually, I've are, never yeah. driven one, so I feel like I should recuse myself. Well, you guys yeah, are it, Well, you can either trust Pearly or you can trust the rest of the panel. I mean, you might oh, I'm gonna trust more Pearly. thumbs down, you might win. <laughs> I'm going to trust Pearly. He deserves it. Thank <laughs> so. you. Thank you, Jonathan. Jonathan. All right, Mr. Uh, Huffman, which car has the biggest delta between expectation <laughs> and disappointment? You know... I, I could I couldn't vote for the the Lotus because that car was self evident crap anyhow. So I don't understand how that could be disappointing. That car is just trash the moment it came out. The reviews were very positive. Keep going. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, the, the Mustang. I have too many good thoughts. I, I enjoyed that car, so I can't I can't uh, complain <laughs> about it. The A one hundred was is a is a is a bucket. So I don't know. It just doesn't do anything for me. So I have to go for the 4C. I think Jonathan's right. I think the 4C is the most disappointing car because the idea is so good and the execution was so poor. I go for the Alpha 4C as the well, most. And, but my car was also a bucket. 
just yeah, a different bucket true. than a lot of literally, 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 the A100 was just they just slapped that thing together. You have, having said that, the one redeeming virtue for the A100 is is that it was the basis for the Diora, which is one of my favorite uh, custom cars of all time. Do you have that as a Hot Wheels? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> all right alana went next with the a100 i've never driven one so i don't know i might have to recuse myself i'm gonna trust alana I'll that's trust all alana. i have all right, <laughs> so, <laughs> even oh okay. no, it. all right no 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 i had to i had to i had to say i had to i had to i nothing my head it's was a mid-engine van or... which is very intriguing it's not it's really it's it's like not mid-engine it's not mid-engine. It's, it's, it's front engine. You're just you're just the, sitting in front of it. The engine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's oh, I guess control. I guess you're right. It's on the it's on the axle line, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. All right, Alana. Which uh, which of these cars proved most disappointing? Um. So I I do also think that the difference between the presentation and the hopes and the reality would have to go to. Uh, go to the alpha. Um, I, I actually really like that car and I would not tell someone not to buy one because I think they're kind of they're kind of fun in a mis in like a suffering way. Um, and when they are good, they're great. But uh, but it could have been it could have been so much better and you can't do anything to fix it. See like with the Mustang um, and definitely with the Cuda, you can absolutely fix the problems that you have with them. There's enough aftermarket stuff that you could make them whatever you want them to be um you can, you you know, can raise I, the boost on the elite on the elan and well i can't vote for the elan because it's basically my name and so therefore there's no possible way it's disappointing it's absolutely fantastic no matter what um, so but but also i mean even if that weren't the case I, I just think that the the alpha was a really good pick you know it really it's a good example of what something should be and then the reality kind of letting everybody down a bit all right Mr. Uh, Ramsey, it sounds like you're going to get a lot of thumbs up. Definitely from me. Oh, man. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. What's your, uh, what's your pick? <laughs> um, I am actually going to go with uh, the Mustang. Um, and I wasn't, even a, I wasn't even a Mustang guy until much many years after that one. But uh, my best friend at the time had one. And it was like, hey, like I... Like, because you grew up in the Midwest, you're like Mustang, 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 and then, yeah, got in it, and I was like, ooh, oh, this isn't this isn't what I was looking for, um, and you know, I don't feel that way now, but at the time, definitely. How um, many years after the Festivo was that Mustang? <laughs> <laughs> That's first of all, just to make sure we understand one another, we will not have. Uh, slander against the Festiva. I, so, I wasn't slandering. Okay, I'm just making sure. Yeah, so making sure <laughs> that when I'm going down that road. Uh, but oh man, this was probably. Oh well, actually, uh, not that long. Oh, or maybe actually, I'm mistaken. He had the Mustang. What was the one with the big, the big angular? Maybe it was the one afterward. Oh yeah, the, the, when they redesigned the SN95 to be more. Yeah, there, there was a name for that. That um, yeah, bigger new um, edge. Yeah, 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 yeah. New Edge is the one um one at, but it was probably 10 years, uh 10 to 11, 12 years. So a lot of experience. Year. A lot of experience. Um oh well, I mean, but did you yeah? But I mean, I but look, I would still take a festiva over. I've not fallen out of love with a festiva because how could you? I mean, it's a Flintstones car. Like, what's to fall out of love with? <laughs> well, the festiva there's nothing there. there. The Festiva, exactly. The Festiva is like 600 pounds lighter than that um, 4C, too. <laughs> and there's that. And uh, aluminum suspension, very well done. <laughs> yeah, very nice, the Festiva. <laughs> All right, Casey. Um, yeah, I'll give you a thumbs up on your oh, car. I'm a moss on that one. I... <laughs> Pearly still likes it. I like the car. Oh, that's right. Good memories. Of yeah, the... I was just looking at it. I was going, yeah, I kind of still like it, even though. Like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> There's I guess no take was, backs. No take backs, Casey. Yeah, <laughs> this was it was hard. It was hard to find something. That I, but the uh, it's it's for me. It's uh, <clears throat> it's got to be the it's the alpha. Yeah. It's the alpha. Like you understood the assignment. Yeah, yeah, you nailed it. I agree. All right, uh, vote on the M100 front wheel drive Lotus Elan. I'm actually gonna 
I, it was I so loved that car. trash. Well, yeah, I, I loved that car. How, how, can I, how, how did that car be disappointing? It was it was obviously garbage the moment it came wait, out. Wait, wait, wait. Really, really, really. Hang on. Jonathan is admitting that he loved the car when he came Oh, out. I did. Yeah. I, man, when that car came out, man, I was like, oh, my God. I think it's gorgeous. Well, I'm, I love thumbs, it. I'm thumbs up on this because when Tony told me he owned one, I was like, what? <laughs> it, 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 like it was such a it was it was such an unexpected choice uh in his you know in, in in all the cars he's owned i was like you know you know i mean that, that had that was probably was that your first front drive car no you had a gti no i had a gti i like lotuses i like lotuses yeah and it's an didn't you but what car off. did you have immediately before that gti what That's car did you have immediately after it uh, a uh, Jetta GLX with a VR6. Okay. <laughs> Lotus sent you back to VW. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, baby, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. There was a Caterham sprinkled. I was going to say, yeah, I was. I thought, I thought it was like, I thought Caterham was 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 in there too. Yeah, there was yeah. a Caterham sprinkled in there too. All oh, right. Yeah. Um, what am I picking? Oh, Jonathan, you killed it. <laughs> yeah. Totally, okay. you killed it. The only it's unanimous, Jonathan. It's, well, I couldn't vote for myself, so I don't know if it's exactly. unanimous. But yeah, but you're, you, you, by picking it, you in picking, <laughs> by picking it, you implicitly vote for yourself. So you, it's a, it's a unanimous choice. Yeah, perfect, Thank you. perfect score. It's all all right. right, now uh, well, that brings that brings us to the end of this episode. Um, if you want to leave some of the cars that disappointed you in the comments, we'd love to read about them and mm -hmm. keep the challenges coming. And please subscribe and like, and we will try to see you all next week. Try, <laughs> try. It's hard. <laughs> I, you know, the guys, I, I don't think you guys understand how much I built up the e-body in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Here's, here's window shop after hours. Yeah. Alfa Romeo is a particular way of living, of experiencing an automobile. The real essence of Alfa defies description. To move a man's spirit, we deal in the realm of sensation, passions, things that have as much to do with the heart 